Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to my course on enhancing soft skills and personality. This is the first week, second unit, this is the second lesson and we are in the introduction and this is the second introduction I am giving and as I was telling you, I am trying to give you a overall preview of the previous course that most of you have done under the name developing soft skills and personality. Now, why it is important to talk about that course before beginning this because that was done at a very basic uh, fundamental level. Some of you who are doing this have not done it and some of you who have done it uh, may benefit even by a quick overview of the course. So, what I did in the previous introduction, I actually gave a quick recapsulation of the first 24 lectures. Okay, in which we discussed about various aspects of soft skills as well as developing one's personality. In this second part of the introduction, I will try to talk about the remaining 24 uh, lectures and then uh, to start with, I will be starting with lecture number 25 on fifth week module number 1 and from this week actually I started to discuss with you those who have done it before on technology and communication, particularly about the technological personality that we are all becoming these days. Overall, the lecture focused on the impact and influence of technology in communication. I started with the thought from uh, Donna Haraway, whether we are becoming cyborgs that is cybernetic organisms. Because today, uh, there is lot of blurring between the biotic that is the living and the mechanical that is the non-living. We became cyborgs by treating all media extensions of human faculty as real. Today, there is no distinction between the eye and the camera. Okay. So, what the video shows you, we believe that is the real one. So, technological components define as well as give human identity. Machine is given human treatment and human is treated like a machine. So, to illustrate this point, I uh, gave a very poignant story about a father's new car and a child who tampered with it. Again, if you want to recollect the story, you need to go back to lecture number 25, watch the video. Especially those who are doing this for the first time, I would say that uh, you can just take a quick look at the story and why I say that uh, humans are treated like machine. The cyborgian shift is affecting the mind and the body. Now, in this sense, I concluded the lecture with the thought that we need to keep certain keywords in mind such as control, benefit and choice. We need to ask questions like who controls technology, who benefits from it and do we have a choice or is somebody choosing it for us and who is giving him or her the power to choose it or is it him or her or just it, just a machine. Now, with that thought, I concluded with a note from uh, Albert Einstein. The quote goes like this, I fear the day that technology will surpass our human interaction, the world will have a generation of idiots. Before I started the next lecture uh, on mobile technology and how it is affecting us, I wanted the audience to think over this point. Mobile phone makes you closer to person far from you. Mobile phone makes you closer to person far from you, but it takes you away from the one sitting next to you. With this thought, we started with the next lecture on mobile personality and how uh, the influence of mobile is on human personality and how mobile has deviated from its main intention. What was the main intention of inventing mobile? It was saving time. Instead of keeping the phone in a fixed place, mobility is given and then you can be anywhere and then you can save time. It is used for help in emergency. It is 
instantaneous distance connection and it can keep human relations intact. So, these were the basic purposes for which it was found, but humans have become mobars, mobile organisms. What are they doing? They are sleeping, playing games, watching movies, using mobile for checking time, calculation, address and so on. Mobile addiction or nomophobia is something that I discussed in the lecture and cautioned people about which can affect you, your overall personality and lead you into something that we call it as obsessive compulsive disorder that you will be compelled to check your mobile, to sleep with your mobile, to all the time be anxious as what updates are happening in your mobile, in social network etcetera. I ended the lecture with giving some suggestions for becoming human. One should have mobile free time, one should keep it away sometimes and treat it as a slave not as a master, not using it as a substitute for watch or calculator or map etcetera. So, these things are to be done and some basic mobile etiquette like some mannerisms you need to follow when you use mobile which will uh, contribute to effectiveness of your personality. Certain things I discussed were avoiding uh, mobile when face to face communication is possible, meaning if you sit opposite to someone and you can talk to the person, why should you text on your mobile? And uh, you should be empathetic about others time in the sense you should not use mobile frequently to disturb anybody at any time depending on your whims and fancy. You should use apt caller ringtone, it should not be annoyance to others and you can always use silent mode or switch it off in uh, important places, official transactions where it should not distract others. You can also use other modes of communication such as email effectively when mobile is not required. Finally, I concluded with the thought that your cell phone has already replaced your cameras, your calendar, your alarm clock, your watch and your walkman. Do not let it replace your family and true friends. Now, the next lecture, the 27th lecture in the fifth week module 3 was again on technology and communication, but focused on email principles. Okay. Uh, I try to tell them in terms of soft skills and personality development, the five cardinal principles, basic fundamental principles you should follow, what are they? Planning, preparedness, persuasiveness, presentability, perseverance. Now, I try to show some email examples that violated all these principles and ended up causing some disaster in terms of communication all were indicating that the person who sent it utterly lacked soft skills and no sense of personality development. Okay. We followed the same thought in lecture 28 and then I went to the next level of showing examples of bad emails, okay, how not to send emails. In fact, I urge those who have not seen those videos to take a quick look at them and see what bad examples are discussed, so that you will be able to identify what makes a good email. Use of formal salutation was missing, avoiding excessive use of capital letters was not done, avoiding slang and colloquial uh, language, avoiding mixing up of two languages like use of Hindi with English and informal communication it should be avoided, avoiding text language in formal communication. Showing regard for uh, punctuation is a very good trait, which was not followed in the bad examples that I discussed. They did not bother about spelling and grammar also. And mailing only to the concerned person is another basic norm, instead of sending it to a group when it is not at all required. In the next two lectures, I just discussed about netiquette. What is netiquette? Netiquette is just a portmanteau term combined from net, internet and etiquette. 
It refers to polite and acceptable mannerisms for communicating with someone using the internet. So, people become insensitive while using computers. They more or less start behaving like robots. No formal training is given for using the internet and sending emails, whereas those days for even drafting letters, people were getting formal training before uh, getting appointed in some clerical positions. Most of the times, these people, since they do not get any formal training, they ignore the five P's of soft skills that I just discussed. I ended up the lecture by giving some basic etiquette norms such as the receiver should be treated as human being, not as machine sitting at the other side. Emotions are to be expressed through appropriate words to indicate that uh, you are not actually a robot. You can use emoticons. Words should be appropriately chosen, the right word in the right place because it can be stored permanently and sent emails are controlled by the receiver. So, one has to be very careful while sending the email before pressing that send button and ethical correctness is always desired. In the next lecture, I started focusing on communication skills. Okay. I started with why effective communication is important and I focused on effective communication because an effective communicator is the one who will always lead and people will be happy if they are able to communicate effectively. Most of the heartbreaks, most of the suicides all happen because of lack of communication because they are not able to communicate their ideas or they are not able to appropriately communicate their ideas, they are not able to communicate their ideas effectively and get the desired result. Communication, however, is a complex interactive process involving shared assumptions and unspoken agreements. So, frequent miscommunications are possible. Effective communication is your ability to cause the intended and desired response. Using communication in an effective manner, you should be able to get what you want in your life through making people work for you in the way you intend them to work in the manner you want them to cause the response that you want. I ended up the lecture by talking about basic communication process which can be simply asked in the question who sends what to whom through which channel with what effect. So, sender is the one sends to whom the receiver through the channel with what effect. So, that is the feedback. The components of communication were also discussed such as conciseness and clarity, conviction and confidence, genuineness, interest, empathy and timing sense, brevity and effectiveness. In the next lecture, uh, I focused on barriers to communication, particularly the ones which arise out of sender and receiver's personality. So, barriers actually act as physical, mental, emotional, psychological blocks and they result in failure of communication or miscommunication. So, in terms of the ones which arise out of sender receiver's personality, uh, often it could be because of uh, the encoding decoding issues where uh, there is no sharing of a common code or the language that is used is not used within a common frame of reference. Again here, very interesting examples have been discussed to make these concepts clear. I would suggest that you take a quick look. Personality barriers are psychological in nature. So, difference in barriers are often overlooked because people normally take the commonality in communication for granted. So, difference in perception and the factors which cause barriers were also discussed. And then uh, like I started discussing about overcoming strategies such as the use of empathy in situation where there is psychological uh, blocks. In the next lecture, the focus was on interpersonal transactions. Again, what are the barriers which act and how we can overcome them. So, limited frame of reference could be a problem. Emotional interference is a problem. Positive emotions as well as negative emotions can be interference, though negative uh, emotions can be much more uh, dominant than the positive ones. Overcoming strategies, for example, removing fear of change 
choosing the right psychological moment will all help in communicating effectively. Various types of language barriers were discussed and then uh, in terms of use of words, sometimes same words will have different cultural meanings, same letters will have different grammatical meanings, we discussed uh, these examples and overcoming strategies, making the context clear will help, using non-verbal correlatives, seeking clarifications, so that will help you to overcome. I also concluded the lecture with technological barrier. Uh, we talked about how technology itself can act as a barrier and some of the overcoming strategies like use of appropriate medium. As I said before, do not use mobile when you can use email and do not use email when you can just go and talk to somebody face to face. Avoiding excessive misuse of uh, media should also be uh, one of the overcoming strategy. In the next lecture, I again focus particularly on miscommunication. Miscommunication actually ac happens because of the misperception between either the sender or the receiver or both. And then we discussed about instances of action transaction failure by looking at some example. Before that, I talked to them about the communication flowing through formal channels like downward, horizontal and upward. And then the forms of communication flowing through formal channels in the form of written, oral and electronic. And the barriers to information flow in organizations starting with the administrative hierarchy, long lines of communication, too many transfer stations and lack of trust, etc. We looked at some very interesting illustrative examples for message distortion in downward communication and miscommunication in product evolvement. Take a look, you will enjoy uh, looking at them. In the next two, I started introducing nonverbal communication. In, instead of introducing nonverbal communication in a theoretic mode, what I did was I just tried to give a kind of pre-thinking assessment in which I will be able to know like what is important at the basic level which should be important and the uh, readers, the viewers were able to understand their level. So, we had uh, two lectures, lecture 35 as well as 36 and it was completely an assessment of what they know about body language. And the assessments were done for checking their existing knowledge about body language and to clear certain misconceptions about nonverbal communication. We had a simple true or false uh, way of uh, uh, doing this assessment and uh, many enjoyed and then many responded to that in a very positive manner. Now, in the next lecture, I uh, introduce nonverbal communication as well as I talked about the importance of nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication as all of you know is communication without words. It is using images, symbols, signs, gestures, facial expressions, postures, etcetera. And interestingly, we discuss about theorists who say that 93 percent of communication effectiveness is determined by body language. So, nonverbal messages are very important. But they are important for uh, reasons like they are very difficult to hide, they are harder to hide and consciously control. So, they are more accurate indicators of how a person feels, they are dealing with emotions not with reason and they are the true tellers of what you feel inside. I discussed about the functions of nonverbal communication in this lecture. Some of the basic functions which I discussed were. Uh, they are used for repeating what is said verbally, they are also used for complementing or clarifying verbal meaning, contradicting verbal meaning, regulating verbal interaction and substituting for verbal meaning. Then I ended up uh, uh, briefly talking about the debate, whether it is nature or nurture. So, if you, if you have good body language, is it something that is given to you by birth, by heredity, by gene? or is it something that you developed from the culture. Now, most of the uh, modern theories in terms of communication or nonverbal behavior, those who deal with even soft skills, they all believe that it could be nurture because desired behavior can be learnt and cultivated. You do not have to worry that, oh, I cannot uh, emulate certain kinds of behavior, but uh, in fact that 
those behavior which you think should be emulated can be learnt and cultivated. I then focused on certain issues and types of nonverbal communication. The issues of nonverbal communication uh, actually pertain to the voluntary and involuntary aspect of body language. So, voluntary body language uh, deals with formalized gestures which are unproblematic, but involuntary body language actually they deal with subconscious reflections and they are problematic. The involuntary nonverbal cues they actually come from the subconscious mind. Now, there are uh, issues with appearance for example, people who are attractive are just to be more intelligent. There is no factual basis to corroborate this, but it can affect decisions about hiring, placement and promotion. And then I uh, discussed in detail about the types of nonverbal communication, started with kinesics, body movement and gesture, continued with facial expression, oculistics or eye gaze, haptics or touch, proxemics or use of interpersonal space, chronemics or time, paralinguistics that is vocal cues and silence. In the next lecture, I uh, gave a list of basics and universals to do with nonverbal communication, but of course, with the caution that while applying this basic and universal body language, especially in an Indian context, one has to be very, very careful. Uh, gestures like uh, touching the elders feet, uh, gestures like crossing the arms can be interpreted in a different manner in a with a negative connotation where we see uh, those gestures in a positive connotation. Feet can be indicators of attraction, it can indicate withdrawal and dislike and then there are other more uh, basics and universals indicating openness, defensiveness insecurity, cooperation, confidence, nervousness, frustration, etcetera. Overall, I concluded with the thought that body language is innate. So, what is latent in us can be manifested by good efforts and practice. In the next one, I uh, gave some tips for interpreting nonverbal cues. So, you see certain cues emanating from others, how do you interpret, how do you classify, how do you infer meaning. So, there are these three primary dimensions uh, talked about by one uh, famous Mehrabian. So, he talks about immediacy that is to do with liking, arousal that is with responsiveness and dominance that is with to do with balance of power. He also gives this uh, three C's by which you can identify that is looking at the context cluster and change. So, using this method we try to see how you can identify a liar and then I uh, later focused on the challenges of studying nonverbal communication. Some of the challenges are associated with its nature that it is ambiguous, it is continuous, it is multi channeled and it is culture based. So, I ended with some caution while interpreting this nonverbal cues that one should not jump into conclusions and one should always consider other external factors like temperature, weather etcetera. Appearance can always be deceptive. So, awareness can help in controlling negative expressions. Develop wide range of nonverbal behaviors, positive body language is always uh, desirable and it is something that is required for uh, in terms of developing soft skills or in terms of getting success in interviews, group discussions and all that. So, what are the components, ingredients of this positive body language? Smile, open posture, forward lean, especially while uh, in negotiations or in interviews, they say that slight lean is indicating your interest, touch, <coughs> eye contact, gestures and nods. So, this will indicate that you are positively tuned towards uh, receiving somebody's uh, dialogue. The next two lectures focused on body language for interviews and body language for group discussions simultaneously. Now, body language for interviews, I started with 
preparing one at mental, emotional and spiritual levels. But apart from that, employees are clearly looking for soft skills <coughs> which comprise many body language traits such as appearance, attitude, personality and positive outlook. Now, in order to make that first best impression, one has to keep in mind punctuality. This is part of soft skills, okay. dress, handshake, body language, enthusiasm. You may think that how does punctuality matter? I am going to talk more about in uh, uh, this uh, enhancing soft skills also when I talk about time management because that is uh, one determinant behavior by which they know so many things about your sincerity, about your devotion, commitment, about the way you are treating your body itself, your mentality, attitude, etcetera. And then I uh, discussed about some do's and don'ts in terms of dress code, in terms of appearance and use of accessories. Uh, towards the end, I emphasized on firm handshake, eye contact, appropriate posture, showing enthusiasm throughout, smiling radiating confidence, remaining calm and collected, leaving with a good feeling. In the next lecture, I followed same similar tips, but in terms of group discussion. So, in that I discussed about various aspects and components of body language for group discussion and then focused on don'ts as well as do's. Some of the don'ts and do's that I discussed, don'ts being anxious to talk too much or nervous and talks little showing aggressive behavior, arrogant gestures, distractive body language, biting nails, shaking legs, picking nose, playing with pen and do's, maintaining eye contact, smiling, remaining cheerful, open palm gestures, upright walk, nodding to show agreement. And in the next set of lectures, I focused on presentation skills because uh, many uh, participants wanted this to be a major discussion in the previous course. So, I started with the major issue many of uh, the viewers were facing that is overcoming fear in terms of giving a presentation, oral presentation or PowerPoint presentation, whatever it is when you want to give it before public. I started analyzing like why people fear. <coughs> so, normally it is either fear of humiliation or unfamiliarity about the surrounding or fear for the unexpected, something bad might happen. So, that kind of thinking and some strategic tips which were given about overcoming fear include the following, remaining confident, having a positive self image, being determined to do something about the fear, practicing at a small informal level, pumping out the inner resources like adrenaline knowing that people do not really care about what you do. They are buried in their own thoughts and all the time you think that they are just looking at you and then they are analyzing your behavior. Knowing the subject thoroughly and believing in it. So, nothing like thorough knowledge about the subject that gives you the ultimate confidence, preparing and practicing and keeping a relaxed frame of mind, being empathetic to the audience and visualizing your delivery. In fact, visualize a standing ovation even before going to the presentation that will actually give you a lot of nerves and energy. And then uh, in the next one I suggested as how one should become a professional uh, presenter. <coughs> to do this more awareness, so you should go to the venue before time, view the venue, welcome the viewer, master your material, calm your mind, visualize yourself speaking realize people want a winning leader, especially when there is a troublesome uh, audience who is going to put you difficult question. They want you to handle it. They give you the job of a leader to you. So, try to tackle it in an appropriate manner. Avoid apologies. Focus on your message, not the medium. Turn nervousness into positive energy and gain experience. And then I talked about main objectives of public speaking which uh, are to entertain, educate, provoke and then influence. So, you need to decide what you are going to do, which part of this uh, objective you are trying to target. And then the next important thing that I discussed was about structuring and delivering one's speech. So, usually it should be three or four points, starting strongly and clearly, 
making use of anecdotes, summarizing briefly, making it relevant, ending with a positive note. So, this will all ensure that you are becoming a professional. Just to motivate, I just refer to a quote from Christopher Reeve, which goes like this. So many of our dreams at first seem impossible, then they seem improbable and then when we summon the will, they soon become inevitable. In 45th lecture on the week 8th, module 3, so I focused on the role of body language in presentation skills and then I gave certain tips related to some of these uh, ideas like practice before the mirror. So, that is very important. So, you see your body language, if anything is unpleasant, you can change it. Dress appropriately, do not hide, so behind the podium, behind the table. Maintain eye contact with all, even if they look unfriendly. So, try to maintain, look at the forehead, if you cannot look eye into eye. Do not shift looks, do not hold on to anything, face the audience, keep the palm open. Do not put hands in the pocket, speak loudly and clearly, maintain a normal pace, never slouch, never turn back to the audience. In the next lecture, the focus was completely about using visuals in presentations, because people use visuals, but then they do not know why they are using it. So, I started with the purpose of visuals. Visuals are used to illustrate key points. They are used for reinforcing verbal message and they try to stimulate audience interest. The visuals will try to focus on audience attention, not in distracting them. So, some visual guidelines will also help making your presentation much more attractive and effective, such as the use of bullet points, suitable font size, so that anybody from the last bench can also look at what you are giving, checking spelling, visibility avoiding standing between the projector and the screen, so that your shadow is seen, not the PPT. Presentation practicals need to be looked into, such as emailing the presentation in advance or uh, keeping a hard or spare copy and then rehearsing with the computer in which you are going to give the presentation. The lecture ended with some final tips, such as using topics from one's own experience developing narrative skills, all the people want to hear a story. So, if you give the same presentation in the form of a story, people would like it rather than giving it in a very monotonous manner, speaking with a purpose and making it clear to the audience, using anecdotes and funny facts, overall communicating clearly and effectively and at the end of it trying to develop your own style. So, once you develop your own style, so then you will have your own fans. Now, the last two lectures were uh, rather uh, special, because uh, the last but one, the 47th one focused on reading skills. It was completely on effective reading. Uh, reading is very important if you want to develop yourself as a speaker or a writer. So, I started with some good techniques such as reviewing sampling, which will help you to eliminate what you do not want to read and choose the one you like to read. Talked about other uh, techniques like skimming, so in which you can uh, glance through the keywords. Uh, this is useful for uh, going through newspapers, magazines, travel brochures, etcetera. Scanning which is reading a text quickly in order to find specific information such as looking at the name, year or a figure and then using clustering for improving your speed rate of reading, reading words in groups for quick and full comprehension and then close reading that is reading for appreciation which is used in literature or philosophy. One line from a play, to be or not to be by Hamlet, in Shakespeare's Hamlet. So, you can talk about that, two, three hours, why did he say that and the use of that grammatically, the use of uh, repetition of uh, uh, words, etcetera, etcetera. So, words are analyzed for inner and in-depth meanings in close reading. Overall, I ended the lecture with the suggestion that 
you should develop addiction for reading and that is a very good positive addiction. Somebody said read anything 5 hours a day, soon you will become learned. And then use this zigornic effect, read something to finish it and then reading, finishing whatever you have started. So, will give you confidence and make you read complex materials, tougher ones by which your level of thinking will also keep on increasing. The last but not the least lecture was on human relations, developing trust and integrity. We started with human perceptions, the course ended with human relations and why there was emphasis on developing trust and integrity because all the soft skills that you will develop and whatever personality that will develop will be of no use if you cannot gain this trust and integrity in human relations because human relations will contribute to your success or failure whether you are going to live happily or whether you are going to live a remorseful life, it is the human relationships that will determine. So, the golden rule is to treat others as how you wanted to be treated by others. Give respect and then you will get respect, give love, you will get love back. But the most important thing that I was emphasizing is never to break the trust of someone built for years, whether in professional or personal level. And do not let someone down in impulsive moments which you will regret forever throughout your life. Be careful. And the other point I emphasized was circumstance does not make you but reveals you. If you say that oh because people around me or the situation was like that, so I behaved in that mean manner. So, it is not the situation not the circumstance, it was in you that was revealed in that situation or circumstance. And if you decide to betray someone or to give an unfair treatment, ask yourself whether that person would do the same to you in the given circumstance. If the answer is no, you should not uh, uh, do this at all to that person. It will be completely unfair and it is unbecoming of your uh, personality and developing your soft skills. Overall, people can forget things, but they can never forgive the wrongdoings. And people will always remember the way you treated them. People may not remember the words you speak. Okay, they will forget whatever you speak to them after some time, but they will always feel that oh, whenever they met you, you left them with a good feeling. There was a positive thinking and they, they had a, a very fulfilled, satisfied feeling whenever they came in touch in you, okay, whenever they contacted you. So, they had a feeling that you will resolve their problems and you never created problem for them. So, that trust, that integrity will go a long way in developing your uh, soft skills and personality. With that note, the course ended and uh, uh, that I at the end also I uh, said that we will begin the next course very soon and that is the course that we are in now that is on enhancing your soft skills and personality. Now, the idea was while talking about developing soft skills and personality, it was to focus more on personal and professional skills and this course enhancing soft skills and personality, the idea is to focus more on interpersonal and management skills. Although this is just for uh, the sake of understanding them in clear cut categorical uh, way of looking at them, but you also know that these are skills which might overlap, okay. there are blurring. So, you cannot put them into watertight compartments and they say that oh this is uh, management, this is not uh, professional and all that. For the sake of uh, differentiation, they are different and then slightly enhanced in the sense that these basic ones such as forming good habits, such as maintaining integrity are not the ones that I am going to talk about now, but slightly at a higher level. So, in the previous one I said that we should be able to work at a higher level of motivation. So, to reach that higher level, how are we pitching in the next course, enhancing soft skills and personality. So, once again I welcome you, look forward to your continuing with the course. So, these two uh, introductory lectures actually gave you a 
good glimpse about what I have done before. Now, the next lecture so will not be this long as I was uh, telling you, it will follow this uh, 30 minutes or so pattern and then it will uh, continue in the same manner, you will be able to easily uh, get a concept and then understand that and respond to that. Thank you so much for uh, watching this very patiently. I am ending this with further reference which I gave it in the previous one. So, you can just go to the YouTube channel link and then download all the videos or go to NPTEL link, download the videos, watch it whenever you want, whenever uh, I make a reference or like uh, there are uh, some students who just who keep on watching it within a week and then finish off, it is up to you. But as I was telling you, watching it will make you fine tuned towards the course that we are going to do and those who have done it already, in case you missed some part of the previous one, now is the time to take a quick look before we actually go to the next one. Thank you so much, have a nice day.